Because y'all, y'all got me saying, 
sayings. You know, y'all got these sayings. Like, have y'all ever heard a saying, push? Yes, that means pray until something happens. Anything you want from God, just push. My pastor went a little too hard one day. He said, you know why you in debt? Because you're doing everything but tithing. I thought that's why I was in debt. So the pastors, they got to come up, you know, with these little scenarios. Now, I need y'all to help me out to make sure y'all vote. So the first method that they come up with is the Pharaoh method. Let me hear you say Pharaoh method. Now, the Pharaoh method is that pastor who just don't want to let God's people go on Sunday. Preaching through breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But he always got that one line, y'all. I'm bringing it on in. Two hours later, he's still bringing it on in. But it ain't his fault, y'all. It's the deacon fault. Because the deacon yelling out crazy stuff like, take your time, pastor. Take your time. Time up. We've been here since Christmas. It's Easter. Jesus been born and ain't died. We still in service. The next pastor is the sound of says pastor. Let me hear you say sound of says pastor. Now that's the pastor who always wants you to participate. First of all, pastor, that ain't what I pay my offer for. I don't want to participate. But they got these little games they play in service. They'll read the scripture and say all things are possible through Christ. And then he'll make sure you pay the attention. He'll say few things and he wants you to say all things. Most things. All things. All things are possible through Christ. I'm cool with that because you want to make sure we vote. But the thing I don't like is when y'all start doing that turn to your neighbor part. Because I'm going to be honest, Pastor. Who would even say, I like my neighbor? Thank you. I will be passing the plate a little later. But who to say I like my neighbor? But it ain't his fault neither. You got to figure out who ushering on this particular Sunday. Now, if it's the old ushers who take being the soldier in the army of the Lord a little too far sometimes, and you trying to get in, and they holding that door real tight. If it's them ushers, if it's them ushers, you don't sit where you want to sit. You sit where they tell you to sit. So I got in late one time coming from the club ministry. I pressed my way on y'all, I'm just jealous. But I got in late and the usher had a nerve to sit me next to my ex-girlfriend, y'all. You know what this lady did? So I'm up there, you know, I'm up there getting to the service until the pastor say, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, we gonna get through this. This can't be a word of God. This can't be a word of God. Turn back to the same neighbor and say, neighbor, it ain't over yet. Y'all know what I had to do. I had to put that finger up. I'll be honest, y'all, because I like to be honest. I wanted to put another thing up, hey. So I just put two fingers up and told her to pick one. And she up there looking at me with them fake eyelashes on, like one of them old baby dolls. When you lean it forward, lean it back, lean it forward, lean it back, winking and blinking at me. I try to tell people, I try to tell people read the Bible and get an understanding of the Bible for yourself. So when the preacher preaching, you can be on one accord with the preacher. You can come with your spirit already, and y'all can be in the midst. Right? So, I'm telling you this for one particular reason, because of his last pastor. He's the anti attack pastor, y'all. Y'all know that hot pastor? Like, he got some flim or something that's going on? Half the time, this pastor ain't even preaching about none of y'all. I'm in service the other Sunday, with this pastor, he ain't preaching about nothing. He preached about lunch. But he had the people really involved in everything because he started off with the church lingo. He was like, God is good. And all the time, the other day, ha, I walked into McDonald's, ha, 
The man said, come on up, ha. My name is Jesus, ha. Would you like to try, ha. Two fish fillets, ha, for two dollars, ha. And as I went in my spirit, ha, I noticed, ha, when Jesus, ha, fed the multitude, ha, with two fish, ha, and got loaves of bread, ha. I went back in my spirit, ha, and I noticed, ha, Jesus, ha, spells his name, ha, J-E-S, ha, U-S, God, oh, hear me. I say Jesus, ha, spells his name, ha, J-E-S, ha, U-S, ha. I looked in the eyes, ha, and said, Jesus, ha, is that you? I want you to know that God, ha, is still feeding the multitude today. Look to your name and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Let me get a big pig, too. The deal felt so good in my spirit, ha, had me wound up, ha, had me speaking in tongue, ha, I was like, ba da ba 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 I'm loving it. I like to leave off with some serious notes, man. And this is to the black men in here. Um, black men, we need to get more acquainted with Jesus. Encourage Jesus everywhere we go. Especially riding in the car in today's world. Because getting pulled over by the police can be a scary situation. Because being pulled over by the police as a black man, it's three ways that this can go wrong. Now if it's two white cops, leave everything in your pockets, because you're going to jail. If it's two black cops, cool. They don't want to do the paperwork. But if it's a white cop and a black cop, this one ain't gonna lose one of y'all. Cause for some reason, the black cop always wanted out with the white cop. So I was coming home from the club industry one night. And the police pulled me over. See, I see you judge. I see you yelling out you judge. I wasn't drunk, but I did on taste and see. That's scripture, so they're probably going to lie your head. <laughs> but he pulled me over, and he said, do you know why we pulled you over? First of all, police, if you don't know why you pulled me over, I'm not about to tell you why you pulled me over. But I know why you pulled me over, because he seen me and Jesus in the car, two black men having a good time. <laughs> Depending on what picked up in your church. But he said, no, we pulled you over because you swerved. Have you been drinking? I said, oh, no. I'm just caught up in the spirit with Jesus. He said, well, if you're caught up in the spirit, what's in that red cup? I said, oh, no. First of all, y'all, I can't go to jail. Because two things you notice about me, I'm skinny and I'm fashionable. Two things that don't work out in jail. So jail ain't for me, y'all. So he said, what's in the cup? I said, nothing but water. Before I could say another word, he reaches over me, grab the cup, smell it. He said, this ain't water, this wine. I said, look at Jesus. He done did it again. <laughs> that ain't the kicker, y'all. The white cup looked at the black cup, said, won't he do it? I'm telling you the real cup, that's y'all tonight. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are, everybody. I have a great comedian here, brother. Teaser. Teaser like Jesus. Come on, sir. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing great in the I'm good. Thank you for asking. I just watched your wonderful set, and I have one question. What encouraged you to become a Christian comedian versus mainstream? Oh, uh, Christian comedian, uh, I'm taking Chris to the mainstream. So I just be true. I just be true to who I am. Like I grew up in the church. I don't try to be nobody else. I'm just true to who I am. So I grew up in the church. So I just tell my story, and people just have to laugh at me. Were you the class clown? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 